<clears throat> now on an entirely different matter, this week two of America's closest partners in the Middle East made history. The UAE welcomed a president of Israel for the first time, laying another diplomatic stone on the foundation of the Abraham Accords. But within mere hours of President Herzog's historic arrival, we were reminded of the dangers that an increasingly violent Iran is willing to impose on anybody who pursues peace. <clears throat> For a third straight week, the UAE was targeted by a Houthi missile attack, of course made possible by Tehran. Last week, the terrorists targeted an air base that hosts 2,000 U.S. personnel. And it was American-made missile defense systems that intercepted the strike. The U.S. faces these same Iranian-backed threats alongside partners like Israel and the UAE. But you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know it by looking at President Biden's foreign policy. <clears throat> A year ago, the State Department removed Yemen's Houthi terrorists from its list of foreign terrorist organizations. <clears throat> Since then, the Iranian proxy terrorists have only increased their attacks underwritten by Iranian money and technology. So much so, in fact, that last month the Biden administration was reportedly considering reversing its decision. Iran's strategy is to use violence to drive the United States out of the Middle East. Small wonder. They would double down on this strategy after the administration's humiliating retreat from Afghanistan. And the failure to respond forcefully to Iranian-backed attacks against U.S. troops in the region has eroded our deterrence and dramatically increased the risk to U.S. personnel. If this administration chooses to shrug or look the other way when terrorists target our friends and our interests, and if they continue to withhold military capabilities from partners threatened by Iran, then they should not pretend to be surprised when traditional American partners in the Middle East start looking to Moscow and to Beijing to fill the vacuum. <clears throat> of course, the biggest distraction keeping this administration's attention from protecting our interests in the Middle East has been its ongoing obsession with returning to the Obama administration's failed 2015 nuclear agreement. Since President Biden took office, he's made rejoining the deal an overriding diplomatic objective. But by blaming their predecessors' <clears throat> maximum pressure approach and demonstrating an unwillingness to respond peacefully, forcefully to Iran's back terrorist attacks, the administration effectively took the threat of sanctions or military actions literally off the table, neutering their own diplomacy right at the outset. So it's no wonder hardliners in Tehran are holding out for more concessions from the softliners in Washington. Now look, it's not just Republicans who are concerned. <clears throat> Senator Menendez recently expressed similar concerns on the Senate floor, called upon the Biden administration, our partners to quote, exert more pressure on Iran to counter its nuclear program its missile program, and its dangerous behavior around the Middle East, including efforts on American personnel and assets. <clears throat> Recent reports suggest some of Biden's own diplomats also share these concerns and have literally withdrawn from the team over concerns the administration's top negotiator is taking to soft a line on Tehran. 
So, Madam President, a year ago, Republicans made it clear to President Biden that his administration was interested in having a bipartisan foreign policy. They'd find willing partners here in the Senate. For my part, I recommended the President focus on securing bipartisan support for promises and threats so they could endure beyond his term in office. I urged him not to let foreign policy of the most powerful nation on earth be reduced to an etch-a-sketch <clears throat> starting from scratch every four years. We don't often agree, but I was grateful to hear Chairman Menendez concur this week that, quote, the best guarantee of a sustainable diplomatic agreement with Iran and its international community is to build one that garners bipartisan political support. So look, I'm still hopeful that President Biden will finally recognize how uninterested Tehran is in negotiating in good faith. It's certainly not too late to start heeding good advice. It's not too late to start ratcheting up the pressure on Tehran and imposing serious costs when, it when its proxies dare to challenge the U.S. <clears throat> it's not too late to try to craft a bipartisan approach to the Middle East. It's not too late to have a plan to contest Russian and Chinese influence in the Middle East. It's not too late to start nurturing the historic Abraham Accords and reassuring partners like Israel and the UAE that their engagement is backed by a rock-solid U.S. commitment. A year ago, I said Iran was the biggest threat America and its partners faced in the Middle East. Unfortunately, a year of the Biden administration foreign policy has made that even more true.